Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part nine of the Metric Minute, presented by Vault Performance. I'm Kareem Drakawi, and today we'll look at the overall concentric phase. Now, this is a very simple phase. An athlete starts at zero velocity at the bottom of the squat and applies force into the ground to extend upward. The athlete only has until they leave the ground to generate force, and whatever they're able to produce will determine their jump height and power output. Now, let's consider some jump strategies. Ideally, an athlete would have a huge force of zero velocity and maintain that force for as long as possible thus yielding a higher concentric impulse. Since the athlete's velocity steadily increases from the start, keeping the force level elevated depends on their ability to produce force at higher speeds. It becomes a question of how hard and fast an athlete can extend that will determine her or his performance. As this simplified graph shows, power is a product of force output and velocity. Increasing either will improve a number of athletic performance factors. However, understanding the results as it relates to jump profile testing is the best means to pinpoint exactly which attribute needs the most work. To summarize, an athlete that maximized their jump potential likely started with a high force of zero velocity, coordinated their movements efficiently, produced large amounts of force at higher speeds, and had a favorable concentric impulse to weight ratio. Now this concludes our discussion on particular metrics and the CMJ overview. Next time will be the start of a series addressing several asymmetry concepts. Until then, please feel free to reach out to me or any of my colleagues involved. Thank you.